Hello there, Stefan and Martin here from Schildwache Potsdam and today we finally talk about tempo. So first, what is a tempo? Well, tempo just means time in Italian. More specifically, it is the time you need for any specific motion. Vigiani cites Aristoteles and it's the time between two points of rest. So if I take a strike here, I'm in a position of rest, I'm in a guardia. I take a tempo to attack and here I'm in a rest again, basically. Stefan is now in a guard and he can take a tempo to thrust me. So basically Stefan performed here two, temp uh, two tempo action, do a tempo action. First he parried, then he counter thrusted towards me. He took two tempi to defeat my one tempo attack. Because that's really important, not only in Hema or our Bolognese historical martial arts specifically, but in all martial arts. When you move, your opponent can move. It's not realistic if you have a kata or some kind of play where you do a thousand actions and the opponent just stands still and lets you do anything, okay? So, really important, our tempo is described by the length of the motion that we take. Of course, if I take a direct motion from my shoulder towards my opponent as a strike, that will be shorter as if I do the same motion. I still want to strike from my upper right, but I start in a lower guard. I need to raise my hand and my opponent gets even more time, okay, to do his defensive action. So that's really important. While we don't measure milliseconds or anything like this to compare different motions against each other, we certainly have the concept of doing full motions, full blows, and half motions, half blows which are shorter, not only in distance, but therefore also in time, okay? What do we need tempo for? Well we usually try to describe the length of an action that we can take to attack an opponent while still being safe. Okay, so that's really important. If the opponent doesn't move, if he just stands still, there's an infinite amount of options that he can take. He can thrust from that position, he can lift and strike from one side, from the other side. It doesn't really matter, right? As long as you have enough time, you can transition through any position and do any strike, any attack that you would like to. So it's really dangerous to approach an opponent that is just standing still. And Dalagokia specifically uh, mentions that. For these opponents, we want to make them move. And in the last few lessons, we learned provocations, how to make them move, okay? Because when they are moving, they determined the path that they are on. Not only mentally, so if he wants to strike, it's really hard to abort that strike because, well, it's a short motion, you fixated yourself on that motion, but it's also physically hard to stop that motion because Stefan needs to not only stop the blow, but he also needs to reorient to go to another direction, for example. So, a motion of the opponent makes a fight for you somewhat predictable. Okay, and that's why we are doing this whole stuff. If I, for example, here provoke my opponent with a covered thrust on the, on the outside and he strikes around, he needs to take a tempo, a fairly long one, which I can then use and go for a parry and a repost, for example. The awesome thing is that Dalagokia gave us five specific occurrences, tempi of the opponent that we can use to strike them while being safe ourselves. So that is what you can look out for. For now, I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care and ciao.